Hey guys, welcome back to Tenerife, and it's a potential title-winning episode today as we take on Atletico Madrid in the league. One point will get us the title. And then there's also the small matter of a Champions League semi-final second leg against Manchester United, where we drew the first one, nil-nil, all to play for there as well. Most certainly, one of the biggest episodes so far. Hold on to your seats. Before we get into the episode proper, I just want to say one thing again, and it's sort of Euros related and similar to my last interjection on this kind of basis. Don't boo national anthems. Just don't. Boo the opposing team. That's sort of in the spirit of competition, but don't boo national anthems. And for the love of God, don't laugh at crying children. Quite frankly, the person who actually thought it was a good idea to show an image of a crying child should be fired. But that's a different matter. I'm wearing my Make Tea Not War shirt as well, just for similar reasons. We're all humans, we're all in this together in the end, so come on. Anyway, football, virtual football at that. Tenerife. I'm just looking, I was looking at previous seasons to see what the points were because I don't feel like we've done dramatically better than we have in past. Now this is the last season, 80 points was our total. 24 wins, 8 draws, 6 losses. 80 points got a second, Barcelona third on 72, Almeria fourth on 69. Quite a tight chasing pack for the Euro uh, Europa League as well, though. And I just kind of wanted to compare that to this season. You can already see it. And it's probably part of the reason why I've not really paid all that much attention to the fact that we are top of the table. We're on 81 points already, which is already a record for us. Three games to go, 81 points. But we only need one more to win this title. We only need 82. And bear in mind, Real Madrid only needed 81 technically last time because we ended up on 80. So... It's kind of going down to a similar kind of level to last year, and Barcelona could get to 81. So if they win all the remaining games and they won one of the last five. So I'm not counting on that. It very much kind of reminds me of the season we won the title with Sheffield United. It's one of those seasons where the normal title contenders just aren't really firing. For whatever reason, the normal con the normal contenders aren't there, Real Madrid especially this time round, considering they've won it the last three. And they won the one two years ago on 101 points to Atletico Madrid's 86, which, quite frankly, we could end up on less than. But first, Manchester United once again, and Pog was back. Grealish was the person who came in for him, seemingly, because that's the position he's taken. Not a bad backup, let's be honest. Jesus, wept. This Man United team's stupid. Just a small but possibly fascinating comparison before we head into this one. Nedelaer versus Obregon. Nedelaer. The impossible to work out what to actually do with him, Nedelaer, versus Obregon, who has played right back basically all season. 40 starts Obregon's had to Nedelaer's 16 starts and 16 subs. Yet, his stats per 90 are better in every respect. And Nedelaer officially isn't actually. Hang on. I only just noticed that Obregon's strongest foot is his left foot. Oh, for the love of God. But you can see what I mean about Nedelaer, though. Like, his, his technicals defensively aren't quite good enough to be a centre-back. He is six foot, but his forward attributes technically aren't quite good enough to be a right back. Neither is his, neither are his physicals, acceleration or pace. They're not particularly that high. So we sort of neither of either yet. And it's which way to develop him. I don't know which way to try. How have I not noticed it? he's left footed? Anyway, the lineup for this Manchester United match will be Merritt and Goal, Lodi, Umtiti, Quiros, Nedelea, because I've just seen those stat contributions. Nico needs to replace Faisal. In the centre of the field, with Ravello and Antar behind him, Zukic and Kayado, Eduard up front. Brendan Lodi, the only outfield player in this 11, not to have scored a goal. So it's worth saying at this stage as well, of course, if we lose here, and if we do get the point, I'll play through the remaining games and just add in all the end of season stuff. As It may be a bit of a bumper episode, but we'll deal with that. Yeah, we'll unsettle David David De Gea. He's 33. Imagine he's not got any more, any more consistent or less... Error prone. Poor Spain, by the way, on that front. They're just, they're just living for the day that they can finally get a goalkeeper that doesn't have an error in them. Feel sorry for Simon, really. Playing in Spanish football leagues on Football Manager, I now realise how many good Spanish goalkeepers there are. How, how, how is it so hard to find one that isn't error prone? Anyway, Rashford now. Pogba. Hits a player. It hits Antov. Latara Martinez. It, I, don't, I mean, I don't mind losing this, but... In the grand scheme of things, I don't mind losing it. But I do mind losing it like that. 
with 90 seconds into this game and a nonsense has occurred. Pogba hits actually his teammate in the face and then the ball, I think Antol tries to remove the danger. It hits Fernandez and falls too. I want to see that again. Yeah, it hits Fernandez. It falls to Lautaro Martinez who plays Rashford in and he's on the side. Like, like the ability to see the future in that highlight was ridiculous. It's like the Man United players there had a sort of final destination situation before the game and knew what was about to happen. Tyre Martinez, Merritt saves. Ogba, Merritt saves. I need to create a soundboard for Merritt saves, I think. That'll save me some time and effort. But so far, there's been six shots in the game and they've all been on target. Seven. How long can that keep up? Well, wow, that's actually kind of ridiculous. We're half an hour into a game and there's not been a shot off target. Rashford's coming forward now. Uh, it's still Rashford, who's... Well, he's actually run entirely past Quiros there. That was on target as well. It's now eight out of eight for both teams on target. Bruno Fernandes, corners. This is a good opportunity for a header to go wide. No, we've cleared it instead. Ah, oh, there's Greenwood. Well, he, he's ruined it. Greenwood has there. That's unfortunate. De Jong's booked. De Jong's a very good player, isn't he? But yeah, De Jong's booked. Nedelair scoops it somehow to Ravella. That was weird. Um, Tiddy, Lord, it. This is a weird game, isn't it? Such a weird game. Quiros, back to Merritt. We're playing it around. As if we're in control. But we're not. Sukic comes forward. Now, he's still coming forward a bit. Forced to go back to Ravella, which isn't a problem normally. Ravella, I say coast past Fernandez. It looked like he sort of went through him a little bit. Ah, Edward scored. 1-1. One, one. We've got an away goal. It's an away goal. I gen In my brain, I forgot the first leg was at home. I don't know why. I don't know why I forgot the first leg was at home. I thought we'd have to win to win. That makes sense. Going into this game, I kind of forgot that a score draw would do it. And now we're in a position where there's a score draw. Latoya Martinez comes forward. I'm actually going to go off attacking for once. I don't do it very often. Of course, if we do get through to a Champions League final, then the end of season stuff will not be in this episode. Because we won't be at the end of the season. Somehow, in this game that we're drawing 1-1, away at Old Trafford, Ravella and Antov are having their worst games of their season. I don't think I've genuinely seen Ravella on a 6.4 ever. And that's pretty much exactly the same chance that Eduard scored that Merritt saved there from uh, Latara Martinez. I forgot who their striker was for a moment. But that's pretty much an identical chance. And Merritt saved it and De Gea didn't. Cardo, Pogba, smacks it forward. Greenwood. Pff. I don't think Greenwood's been within... A yard of the goal with his shots. They've been so far wide. Every, every single... Now, one of the things that's come from Euros, and considering Pogba's back for this one, but one of the things from the Euros, despite France's calamity against Switzerland in the end, the one thing that's come from it is it shows how good Pogba can be when he's got the right partner, in, the, in, in this case, the form of Kante and his national team. Someone who does basically the work <laughs> allows Pogba to be the creative force that he is. And that's what Manny and I don't have, really. They don't have the workhorse player. I thought that's what I thought that's what Donny van der Beek was supposed to be, but apparently not, because he. I don't know what happened. I don't. Did he run over Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's dog? I have no idea. I don't know why he. I don't know. I don't know why he can't get a game. Bakayoko's coming on. Zuki should have been on a six point three this entire game as well. Kyoto, Kyoto swaps sides and Molina comes in. But yeah, Manny United with an actual defensive midfielder would be terrifying. And now Ned is knackered. Obregon comes on. There's rumours of Declan Rice, and yeah, Rice put, <laughs> a player like Rice is exactly what a player like Pogba needs. And I'll be honest, I didn't really rate Rice that much, and then he got booked very early on against Germany. It's coming home. Um, but then he got booked very on, early on against Germany, but, but he managed that game so well on a booking, that entire match. I was actually quite impressed by Rice by the end of that game, because I thought, oh, he's got booked. Like, now we're, now we're up against, like, a decent opponent. He's been booked early on. You know, this is what happens when you actually challenge Rice. And then, quite frankly, he was brilliant after that point. Got the booking, kept his head, didn't do anything stupid for the remaining sort of 80 minutes. We've scored again. And of all the people to score this goal, Bakayoko is not the one I would have expected. This, by the way, this... There was a point where Jermaine Genus com com uh, commentated that Declan Rice should be running into the box behind Kane, which was a ridiculous sentence, really, when you consider the player that Rice is. But that's, that's what he meant, basically. <laughs> Because there was no one else in the box except for Kane following him in. And, you know, Rice isn't the kind of player that does that. He's not playing a Volante. He's playing just ball winning midfielder, pretty much. Despite the fact that's basically what the formation is for England most of the time. Two defensive midfielders. 
Well, Marshall's equalised, but it is somewhat in vain here at this point. They do need a second because away goals are a thing. Well, they need a third, sorry, because away goals. But I can't believe we're about to progress. Why are both their goals like narrow? I mean, it's not that narrow, so I don't know why they've shown that again. Oh my God, we've FM'd them. There's a late chance. <clears throat> Watch the hair. Watch the hair in the replay. Who says football manager is inaccurate? I don't know. I don't know what he was defending. He's at the very bottom. He's hard to see, but he's dived for it before the head has got in. And I say dived. He's done that. He's throwing his he's throwing his hands in the air like he just doesn't care. Please explain the XG on that last goal though, because that was that was that was not a low XG chance. That was that was a good chance. It was a header at the back post. The XG on that should not be minimal. We'll call that game a tale of two goalkeepers. Merritt's on an 8.5. De Gea's on a 6.6. Not many people would have predicted a Champions Cup place final for Tenerife. So how good does this moment feel? Well, it says chuffed. I'm always going to say chuffed. But genu genuinely, we didn't deserve it. I've lied there. But And we've qualified for the Club World Cup. It's at Wembley. It's coming home. Can I come home in Tenerife? That doesn't make sense. So I've just seen Yawn Overguard's comment. I mean, shout out to our clearly Scandi friends. Merit is really good. Thanks, Yawn. Yawn. Never know how to pronounce that. I can only presume that he's he's. It's a newspaper, actually. I just realised. But I thought he was like. I thought he was a fan that we brought in because of our links with Scandi clubs. One thing I wanted to check is I don't remember PSG being in this competition. First knockout round, knocked out by Man United. That explains it. Plus eleven million. Ten saves. Basically, the moral of this journey with Tenerife is buy Alex Merritt. I mean, that's genuine madness. <laughs> Napoli bought him for 16 million and then transfer listed him for 3.6. Just a casual reminder, Napoli played David Ospina ahead of Merritt, and that's why he's transfer listed. Napoli are idiots. The fact we've qualified for the fact that's qualified us for the Club World Cup is a little bit awkward because that was the one thing I was kind of hoping on, even if we did somehow win everything, would remain out of reach for a couple more years. The target is still best in the world. And I mean ranked first in the world, not Club World Championship. So it's going to be a bit awkward if we do win everything, but aren't still first in the world. But I'm not going to count my chickens just yet. We're only in a final. We've not won it. And I think we'll find out our opponent now on the Wednesday. So it's Dortmund who are in our group or Manchester City. Dortmund bring an away goal to the party as well. It's the Manchester City going for three in a row at Wembley. Dortmund had a disallowed goal in the 88th minute. Oh my god. Sterling on a 6.3. Silver on a 6.4. Wait, I'm really confused. That's Bernardo Silva. So who's Bernardo? A, squ a squad player who, by my comparison, is four and a half stars. Righto. Vinicius Jr. up front's a bit weird, but ignoring Vinicius Jr. up front, I hate how good this team is. Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Foden, Bernardo, Bernardo, De Bruyne, which I, apparently you don't pronounce that way. Gaia, the best left back in the game, probably. Diaz, Laporte, who only had a 6.4 there. Dodo, Edison, and goal. But then the bench has Skriniar, Felix, Gabriel Jesus, Neves, Calafiori, and Milenkovic. Radio. Then again, Man United. Man United's team was ridiculous as well. And it's a final between an English team and a Spanish team. I'm all too well aware of that particular record. I've also just remembered Alberto Moreno's in my team. If Alberto Moreno wins a Champions League against Manchester City, is that like some kind of unprecedented statistic? I know in game he's not won the Europa League because that happens at the end of the real season. So he doesn't have the Europa League against Man United in game. But we'll pretend. We'll pretend. Right then, so the team against Atletico Madrid. It's a weird episode. It's a weird episode that Atletico Madrid and a potential title winning game is playing very much second fiddle right now, but Merritt's in goal. Harwood can return the left back because, well, registrations aren't a thing here. Antov, Quiros, Obregon, well, issues anyway. Herrera, Ravella, Nico, they're fine to start. Zukic, Gary, Eduard remains up front. So yeah, no one's actually tired, tired. I'm just rotating the players that are good enough to start, basically, and are registered in because I can. Badrancor is. Sort of back for injury, but he's not at full conditioning yet. He's about one or two days away from full conditioning. So he can play in the next match, which you may not see. But of course, Eduard leads the line for us. Oh, Antov's in central defence, by the way, because if I had Umtiti in central defence, there would have been three out of four on yellow card warnings. And that wasn't something I wanted. Abraham leads the line for Atletico Madrid, which will never not look weird. 
Atletico Madrid needing a point to get into the top four, ourselves needing a point to win the title. So let's just get a draw and everyone's happy. I wonder what all the odds are for a draw here, knowing what it means for both teams. No, a draw technically doesn't secure Atletico Madrid top four here because Betis Catafri would both have games in hand on them. So annoyingly, whilst Barca and I do actually play today, we play at lunchtime, they play in the evening. No one's playing at the same time. It's so stupid, the schedule. Nothing's happening, but that works for us. No one else on point, and it's the champion, and it's the champion basically. Harwood, in was to Nico. Zukic, that was terrible, Nico. What are you doing? Oh, good, Gary's injured already. As Batuan Kaur comes back from injury, Gary goes into it. Obregon, there's always a weird pause after a really good tackle goes in in the box, where you just go, "That's a there's a penalty coming. Oh, no, there isn't. Lamar tried to chip Merritt. Um, I don't know if you've been watching Alex Merritt this year, Lamar, but he's a very good goalkeeper. Also, amusingly, I have noticed it after talking about Donny van der Beek not being able to get into the Man United team. He's playing here for Atletico Madrid. I genuinely didn't know that. I th honestly, the weirdest thing is Brighton's McAllister. You had a very ambitious effort there. That never troubled. Okay, so Gary's sort of fully broken at this stage. I did not leave Callado on the bench. I'm an idiot. Melina comes on there because he can. Can we also just take a brief moment to point out that Corniango here, absolutely ru absolutely ruining the aesthetic they've got going on in defence here. Alvarez, Perez, Jimenez, Corniango. So close. So close to having an easy defence. That's the letters easy, not not the... You get the idea. Although I'm kind of glad nothing's happening in this game because it very much balances out the first one. I genuinely thought that might have been the, ch that might have been the highlight there. Or Black nearly getting caught out by very weird free kick. Nico puts Eduard not in. Zukic, Molina... Bounce back to Eduard. Eduard's... How did that go in? We'll watch that again, shall we? One point, not enough, apparently. Eduard making it three with, quite arguably, the best shot I've seen. Okay, so there's some absolutely shadow players out here. They're getting replaced. Yeah, solid. Why not? Let's, lose, let's utilize the fact that Ren and Lodi can play wing left. I'm not, bothered. I'm not bothering moving people around at this point. Where was on a 6.1? When did that just happen? Oh, well, I haven't got any more subs. Hoiberg's come on for them. A jetty. Put Palestri in. It's 1 1. That was his first goal of the year. I genuinely thought that nonsense was not in the game anymore. I'm aware of the time as well. I'm aware of the time. Palestri's first goal of the season in the 91st minute to equalise. I mean, I'm glad they've had more shots on target because otherwise that would have been annoying. But this happens in our own ground, which is getting 4,000 more seats next year. Actually, it's only about 3. 3,000, something like that. It's been bumped to 25k, basically, as of next season. I do wonder if it can be expanded beyond that, because 25 is a nice round number. And I'm awfully worried that's the maximum, but there we go. Lifting that time. I presume that's Quiros lifting it up, the captain. And, of course, incoming cartwheel from Alex Merritt. I'm always worried he's going to sprain his wrist doing that. I know, I know, I know the game can't do that, but immersion, immersion. So he won the title with Herrera on a 6.1. Classic. Classic football manager. <laughs> well done, lads. You've conceded a 91st minute equaliser, but we've won the title. So, brings the roundabouts. Yeah, it was actually a fair result. It was a fairly rubbish game. Both, got, both teams deserved a goal. And of course, conceding a 91st minute equaliser, but winning the title has made the fan section incredibly confused. <laughs> the girls buzzing. Inigo feels like a defeat, absolutely gutted. And they complete a treble, of course. Spanish Super Cup, Spanish Cup, and Spanish First Division. The only trophy we've not won this year was the Super Cup against Manchester City. <laughs> I've just realised we bookended our season with Manchester City. We opened our season with the European Super Cup, and now we're going to end it with the Champions League final against Manchester City. Let's hope it goes, let's, mm, let's hope it goes better this time. So, of course, the season is going to be resolved with the Champions League final against Manchester City. It's really weird seeing him at the top of the bomb. But there we have it. We're off to Wembley, the site of an historic victory just recently. Can we add another historic victory there? But this time for Tenerife. Find out next time. Ta-ra.